Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. We're still in Chapter 2, and I wanted to spend a little bit more time talking about the SI units and understanding how we use these units in calculations. So recall that we had these base units. So what's the deal with the base units? So basically, depending on what you're doing, you're going to have a different unit as your base. So if I'm measuring length, then I'm going to be using meter. If I'm measuring mass, it's going to be the gram or the kilogram. Temperature for chemistry is going to be either C or Kelvin, but the international base unit happens to be the Kelvin. For time, it's the second. For quantities, it's the mole. And luminosity and current, we're not going to worry about this year, but you'll probably spend a little bit more time on those in physics next year. So when you're making measurements, you're going to be doing some sort of um, some sort of device to use to make your measurement. And again, if you're using a meter stick, then you're probably measuring length. And there's an international standard held in the uh, Hall of Standards where people keep such things, where there's the standard for each of these things. And that's what we measure against. So. Um, we talked about metric prefixes, so if you're measuring distance, for instance, it might be in kilometers and it might be in megameters. And again, when you're measuring these things in these large quantities, we use these prefixes and the prefixes are just telling you what the size of something is. So if I tell you something is a few milligrams, you kind of know it's small because you know that milli means thousandth. So again, it's useful to know these uh, prefixes because they're going to give you an idea of the magnitude of a number. And I gave you this saying in the first uh, tutorial, which was the kind of intro, and this most kittens hate dogs because dogs can't meow much will help you as we go through the year remembering how to convert between the various um, units. And you'll have worksheets that we'll do, and I'll make some tutorials for those as well. And as I said, there's some other ones that we'll encounter during the year. So then it's also um, important to talk about how everything that we measure is not just those base units. There are units that are derived from the base units. And some examples would be area, which is length times width. So that's derived from length. Volume is, again, how much space something takes up. And again, that is derived from length because volume is usually a cubic foot or a cubic this or a cubic that. We'll learn about some even more complicated um, units like density, which is mass per volume. So you think of it in terms of grams per centimeters cubed or grams per milliliter. And we'll get into some more like molar mass and molar volume and energy as we move forward. So volume, I said, is the amount of space occupied by an object. Volume is length times width times height. So it's derived from the base unit of length. And again, there's more convenient ways to talk about it. We'll talk about it in terms of liters or milliliters this year. And density is a ratio of an object's mass to its volume. So again, a complex unit is based off of the two base units of mass and length, because volume is based off of length. So just for posterity, I'll give you um, some measurements of density of some common objects. In lab, we'll be doing some density measurements. We typically do the density of metals like copper or aluminum or tin, or sometimes we'll do lead. Um, these are some common things. Down here, I have a jar that has oil, water, and golden syrup is kind of like corn syrup. And you'll see that they're going to line up according to the differences in their densities. And again, these are just some common things that you see in everyday life. Notice that water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. So let's solve a sample density problem. A sample of aluminum metal has a mass of 8.4 grams. 
uh, the volume of the sample is 3.1 centimeters cubed, calculate the density of aluminum. And so the solution to this problem, we would go through and we would say, what was the given? And here are the two givens. What is the unknown? We're solving for density. At the junior high, you learn that the equation for density is D equals M over V, mass per unit volume. And then to solve it, we would plug in our actual numbers. So this problem solving method we'll spend some more time talking about, but you should always identify your variables, what was given, what's unknown, identify what the equation is that you know to solve the problem. In this case, T is M over V. And then I'm going to plug my numbers in. Notice I included units, calculate it, and then I have my answer. So for now, I'm going to sign off, and the next, uh, the next section that we'll talk about will be about how we handle measurements a little bit more, in a little bit more detail. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.